son of Agamemnon. This is your father's land, the ancient city of Argos. How long have you waited for this happy sight? Observe it. From here, your father led the Greeks to Troy. Here, that poor demented creature, Io, wandered. There's the marketplace called after Apollo. Here a shrine, so famous, lies to your left. This is Mycenae. It is beneath our feet. Rich Mycenae. Blood red Mycenae. The murderous home of Pelops' sons. I carried you once from this place. Your sister snatched you from your father's corpse. And I received you into my hands to rear you till you were man enough to revenge yourself against your father's murder. That time is now, Orestes. The hour is now. Do it now. Decide what to do. The day is breaking to the birds' voices. The stars have shrunk, the night is nothing. Before a soul stirs out of their sleep, do not pause. Decide what to do. Do it now. Best of men, your loyalty shines. A great steed may be on his last legs till he relishes the scent of danger. That's the spirit in you. Now, listen to me, and I will tell you all. And if I miss the mark, you tell me. When I went to Delphi to ask Apollo, how do I revenge my father's murder, the oracle told me this. I must use my own cunning to do the deed, and not trust arms nor men. So, in the light of that oracle, when you get a chance, go into the house. Find out everything that they're up to, and bring it back to me. What? No one will suspect you. Your white hair and your tired face have transformed you. Tell them some story. Say you're a foreigner. You've come from Phosis. Sent by Phanateus, he's one of their bosom pals. And then, on your oath, you must swear. Orestes is dead. There was a terrible accident. He fell from his chariot as he raced in the games at Delphi. Spin them that yarn. We'll go first to my father's tomb and we'll honor it. We'll spill wine and leave a lock of hair as Apollo ordered us to do. But then, we will carry back that bronze urn hidden in the bushes and entertain them with the deception that I am burnt to ashes. Well, will it bring bad luck? So what if the word is that I'm dead? And the truth is I'm safe and sound, ready to earn my fame. The words used to your advantage, they cannot bring bad. No, I've heard of heroes in the past. They were presumed dead, and when they rose again, the honor given to them was all the greater. The rumor of my sad story will do just that. I will blaze like a meteor through my enemy. Oh. Grant me good luck, you. My home. My father's house. <laughs> My father's land. My father's gods. For those same gods have hastened me here to scrub you clean of stain. Don't let me be dishonored. Don't send me from this land. Let me prosper. Let me put this house back on its feet. I've said enough. Old oh, man, you do what you have to do, and I will do the same. <laughs> the time has come, and no man cheats time. Some servant woman is crying inside. Electra? Could it be Electra? Oh, sister, how long since you set eyes on me? Could, could we stay in here? What breaks her heart? We could not. You do what Apollo demands. He is a god. He knows what we should do. Pour wine on your father's grave, Agamemnon, his tomb. He will help us, and we'll succeed. We will succeed. Divine lights we dare again hear my pain. Divine lights we dare again hear my pain. 
you not witness when morning breaks my heart break? My heart break. When night falls, I do not feast in this house of ghosts. I lie alone. My father's dead. He did not die in war. He does not lie on a foreign shore here at home. My mother's hands turned red with his blood. Adulterous. Adulterer. She and Aegisthus split him open with an axe. tree fell and father I am left to dwell alone in your house my my back against the wall weeping for my father dead mourning my dead father but, but I, I swear while my eyes see the sun or stars in the sky I will never cease to cry out my pain and my complaint I will be like the poor nightingale who killed her young, then sorrow raped her heart. That is the song I will spill through this house where blood was spilt. I call upon Persephone. I call upon the dead. I call upon the Furies, revenge my father's blood-stained marriage bed, revenge my father. <laughs> Send me back my brother. I can no longer stomach the size of my sorrow. Electra, you're wasting away with grief. Because your mother's heartless, you're left to mourn the cruel fate of your father. She betrayed him and her lover killed him. A dirty death's in store for sinners of that nature. May the gods forgive me saying it. You are good people. You've come to comfort me. I do know the, the kindness of your hearts, but you should know I, I have a job to do. And that is to weep sore tears over my dead father. You pay kindness back with kindness. You're my friends. So I beg you, leap just... Leave me be. Your father is dead. You can't cry him back from his grave. Your prayers can't raise him up again. He will die from all this grieving. Will you not rest from it when it will bring you no remedy? It is pointless. Why do you persist? It's a cruel child that forgets a father's cruel end. I'd sooner turn to stone and my tears into, into rivers. You're not alone in your sorrow. Others share your burden. Your sisters, Iphianasa and Chrysothemis, they feel their affliction too. Think of them. Think of your brother in his sorrow. A, a young man far from his home. Heaven, send him here to us soon. Orestes. He'll make Mycenae his own. He'll take his father's throne. Oh, I've waited for him. Long years, crying barren spinster's tears. I am drenched lamenting my fate and the many wrongs we have suffered. He knows them all. Not a word. Ah, oh, here he dreams he'll come home. It's buried deep in his bones. Then let him dream. We must wait. Have strength. Keep your strength. God is still great in his heaven and he sees everything. Offer up to him what is eating you inside. Don't go on fire with hatred. Remember this. Times a gentle God, he heals. Agamemnon's son may wander the plains of Chrysa, but he will not forget his father, and the God of death will not forget either. The best days of my life are finished. I have neither hope nor strength. I'm a childless woman who's melting away. I have no man to protect me. I live like a slave in my father's house. I dress like a beggar, 
eat what's thrown me. A terrible cry greeted your father home. And a terrible cry he gave in return. The blow of the axe cut him in two. They were as cunning as they were passionate. And they did the deed. Where did it spring from? This filthy act, was it God or man? That cursed day. That sorest night at the feast to welcome him home. They cut my father like meat. They laid their hands upon him. They, they took his life, took my life. Oh, great God in heaven, hear me. Make them suffer, make them weep. May their power turn to nothing. May they die and, and turn to nothing. Hold your tongue. Has it never dawned on you how much you make your own misery? You pile on your agony. You're a feeble woman fighting mighty enemies. I've harmed myself by the harm done to me. I know the hardness of my heart. But as long as there is breath left in my body, I will not change direction, no matter how harmful. Dear sisters, if you admit the truth, what word of comfort could console me? There is no end to my lamenting. There will never be an end to my sorrow. Well, don't add sorrow on to sorrow. I'm speaking as a friend, a mother you can trust. What limit is there to what torments me? Tell me, is it an honor to forget the dead? Is it in the nature of the living to do that? If there are such people, may they scorn me. And if I possess anything good that I value, may I lose it. If I, if I stop this morning, if I dishonor, if I forget my father, if a, if a dead man is to turn to, to, to dirt and to nothing, and those who did it do not pay the wages of their sin, if they themselves are not murdered in return, then the, the gods are dead and there is no faith. I am here in my own interest, as much as yours. If I am wrong, have it your own way. We will never leave you. Women. I'm ashamed if I've upset you with all this weeping. Forgive me. I have to do it, I have to. Could any woman with good blood in her veins do otherwise? I see the suffering in my father's house. I see that suffering day and night. It gets worse, not better. First, look at myself and the mother who bore me. I hate her. Then, look at me, living in my own home with my father's killers. They rule me. They decide if I get or if I go without. How do you think I survive the days when I see him, when I see Aegisthus sitting on my father's throne, he wears every stitch my father wore, he pours wine on the same fire where he murdered, and the worst... What is worse is... I see my father's bed and his killer lies beside my mother. Mother. Is that a fit name for such a woman? She's, she's so depraved, she lives with that ob obscenity. She fears no force of retribution. It's as if she's, she's gloating over what she's done. She, she celebrates the date. Her treachery killed my father. Cattle are slaughtered. They dance. Every month, she gives sacrifice to the gods that protect her. And I am the unfortunate woman alone in the house, lamenting, wasting away, looking at this abomination, weeping at the feast they call after my father. And I'm not allowed to cry my heart's content. 
Oh, that gracious woman gives full vent to her insulting tongue. You're full of hate, girl. You're accursed. Have you and you alone lost a father? Has no one else ever known grief? May your death be sore and the gods damn you. That is how she insults me. And then she hears Orestes will return. She works herself into a thundering rage. She roars, you're the cause of this, aren't you? You stole Orestes from my arms. You smuggled him away. You will pay the hard price you deserve. Oh, she is foaming these words like a mad dog. And her noble husband stands urging her on that complete coward. That deadly scourge, a man letting his woman fight his battles. And I will turn to dust, waiting for Orestes. Come back. Put an end to this. Or I will die in misery. Oh, I hear he's coming. And then he doesn't come. So, he has destroyed whatever hope I dared hope. My friends, that is how I lead my life. There is nothing holy anymore, nothing sane or sensible. The world's turned bad. Uh, and so have I. Tell me, are you saying this when Aegisthus is in the house? Is he away from home? Of course he's away. I wouldn't set foot outside the door if he were inside. He's in the country. If that's so, I'd press you further. It is so. Ask what you want to ask. Your brother. Will he come or not? We want to know. He says he will come. But he does none of the things he says he will do. A man takes his time when he is to do a great deed. I didn't take my time when I saved him. You know his heart is good. He will help his friends. I do believe it. Or else I could not stay alive. Say no more, for I see your sister Chrysothemis. She's carrying offerings from the house to give to the dead. What do you say outside the house? After so long lamenting, will you not learn you are wasting your time? Your anger's useless. I know well enough how bad our way of life is. I also know what my feelings are. If I'd power, I'd tell our masters. But these are dangerous waters, and we must move carefully. Nothing I do must threaten them. I want you to do the same. I know you have justice on your side, and I do not. But they have power. I must obey them in everything if I am to be a free woman. You are your father's daughter. Ugh. You should be ashamed. You forget him because you respect your mother. You, you lecture me with all you learn from her. You don't have a word to say for yourself. You make your choice. You be foolish like me or you be wise and forget your own. You said if you had power, they would feel your hatred. You then betray me when I do all I can to honor my father. You try and stop me. You'd be a coward as well as a victim, would you? You teach me or you listen to me. What would it profit me to stop mourning? Do I not have a life? <laughs> a, a miserable life, but it's enough for me. And if I harm them, then it's an honor, a pleasure for the dead. If the dead feel pleasure. You say that you hate them, but it's only a word, your hatred. You, you live among them. You live with your father's killers while well, the earth will cover me before I give in to them. Not if they were to give me your, your pomp and pleasures. Oh, you, no, you eat yourself full. Your life is a leisure. <laughs> what I eat does not sicken my stomach. I have no desire to enjoy your privilege, and you wouldn't either. If you were thinking rightly, you could be called the daughter of the greatest of men. You, you choose, as things stand, to be your mother's child. Mm. You are what you seem to be, a traitor. You have betrayed your dead father. You betray your own. Oh. Please, 
Say nothing in anger. There's wisdom on both sides. Learn from her and she learns from you. I've grown used to her way of talking. I would not have broken breath but that I did learn something. She is facing great danger. <laughs> that will put a stop to her lamenting. Great danger? What is it? Come on, tell me. If it's worse than what I now endure, I won't say another word. Then I'll tell you all I know. They will lock you away from the light of the sun if you do not stop lamenting. You'll be taken away from this country. You'll be buried alive in a dungeon and left to mourn there. Take stock of that and don't blame me afterwards. You have a chance to show some sense. They've decided to do that to me. When Aegisthus comes home, yes. Then let him come home soon. You are crazed. What curse are you putting on yourself? Let him come home if these things you say he has in mind... May happen to you. What kind of madness makes you want to that? get away as far as possible from you all? You do not care to leave the life you lead now. Yes, the life I lead now is wonderfully agreeable. <laughs> I would be if you had some logic. And it's your logic to be disloyal to my own. Is that what you teach me? I'm not trying to teach you that, but to bow oh. the knee to those in power. You can bow the knee. I will stand upright. Honour demands you do not come to grief through being My stubborn and stupid. My honour I will defend and if I must I will come to grief. But our father does not demand this. He will forgive us this, I know. The words of a coward. You said them. Will you not stand with me and say them too? No, I'm not so stupid. Then I'll go about my own business. Where are you going? Why are you carrying those offerings? To my father's grave. My mother sent me with them. What are you saying? She, she is making offering at the grave of her worst enemy. To the man she murdered. Is that what you mean? Who persuaded her to do this? Who approved of this? I believe she had a terrible dream. <gasps> oh. <gasps> oh, my father and my father's father. May your gods hear me at last! Do you find some hope in her terror? I can tell you that. If you can tell me her dream... I know very little. But tell me! Very little may be enough to swing fate in our favour. They say our father came back to life. He returned to the light of day. <laughs> <laughs> the scepter he used to carry, the one Aegisthus carries now, our father took it and planted it beside the fire. It grew into a bough thick with fruit. It cast its shadow over all my scene. She told her dream to the sun. Someone near her heard and told me this story. It is her fear makes her send me to the grave. I know no more. I beg you. By all the gods we believe in, do as I say. Stop this foolishness or you'll come to great harm. If you cast me aside, you'll come to me regretting it. My dear sister, leave nothing on the tomb. That woman hated our father. Neither God nor man would let her honour his grave. Give them to the wind. <laughs> Hide them deep in the dust. They won't disturb where my father lies dead. Save them for herself when death takes her. <sighs> she is so without shame, she dares pray to the man she murdered. Do you think the man dead in the earth will receive her offerings? She dishonoured him in death. She killed him like an enemy. She cut his corpse to ribbons. He drew his last breath as she wiped the blood off her hands on his head. Do you believe these offerings will clear her of the mud? That cannot be. Get rid of them. Go to our father's grave. Cut a lock from your hair. Take this tangled one from my unhappy head. <gasps> it is very little, but it's all I have. And my belt, too. It's a poor thing. Give them to him. Kneel and pray that in his kindness he comes from beneath and helps us scatter our enemies. Pray that he will come and destroy all those who stand against us. Someday we may make him greater offerings than they do now. I do believe, I truly believe this. He sent those terrible dreams to her. Sister, do this, do this. You'll help us both. You will help the most loved of all men. Mm.
Our father, our dead father. Her words are holy. If you are wise, do as she says. It's my duty. I'll do it. There'll be no argument. But if you care about me, good women, say nothing of what I'm doing. If my mother hears of it, it'll be on my head. May I not bear false witness, but through the darkness I see the workings of justice. She knows what has to be. She will plant her fatal kiss on the lips of your enemies. And soon she will be here. My mind is dancing. That dream's destroyed my fears. I heard that and my heart took wing. Your father, leader of the Greeks, he will always remember. And the axe that bloodied his brave cheek waits the call from its bronze lair. Bronze, too, are the terrible claws of the god who devours the lawless. She has seen the bed where adulterers sleep, seen the wedding clothes, the wedding feast. And her gift will be a pit so deep, no cry of comfort from man nor beast shall reach their ears who did the deed and sinned against the mighty gods. It's clear as day for all to read. Revenge will never spare the rod. If there's no truth in that woman's dream, our prayers are lost and dying screams. The finder of this house, Pelops, long ago you began this sorrow. Thrown from his chariot, Martellus died, brought down by your deceit. And sorrows meet with sorrow since in this unhappy house. So you're prowling outside the house again. It's easy seeing Aegisthus isn't here. At least he stops you shaming your family in the eyes of the world. Eyes away, you show me no respect. Your constant refrain is that I am cruel, that I do great harm to you and yours. I'm not a cruel woman. If I abuse you, it's because you abuse me so often. And your excuse is your father. Nothing else. I killed him. I know it well. I do not deny it. But I did not act alone. Justice killed him too. If you come to your senses, you'd be on her side. Tell me this father of yours that you're constantly lamenting. Tell me why he, and he alone among the Greeks, why did he sacrifice your sister to the gods? His child that he had the pleasure to conceive. I had the pain to give her birth. Tell me why he did this. Explain. For whose sake did he sacrifice her? For the Greeks, would you say? But they had no right to kill her. She was my blood, my child. And if it was for his brother Menelaus that he killed her, should he not have paid the penalty to me? He cut her soft white throat. My Iphigenia, my child. If I had touched Orestes, he would have killed me. He killed my daughter. Why should he not die? Menelaus had two children. They ought to have died, not mine. Was it not for their father and mother that this war started? Did death want to grow fat on my children, not hers? Did your damned father feel pity for the children of Menelaus? Had he no pity for mine? I killed him. I made the only choice I could. Your father was a fool. He was insane. That's what she would say if she could still speak. My dead daughter. And I do not regret what was done. And were you dead, you would demand I did the deed. Before you judge me, judge yourself. Are you so sure of the ground you stand on? This time, don't accuse me of starting the quarrel. 
But if you deign to listen, I want to tell the truth about my father and my sister. I allow that. If you had always spoken so civilly, I would have listened more to then you. Then listen now. You say you killed my father. Whether you acted justly or not, what greater crime could you admit to? And, and I tell you, you did not kill him in the name of justice. You acted under the influence of an evil man. And now you, you li you, you're living with him. Ask Artemis, the goddess of the hunt, why she still the Windsor Dowlis. No, no, let me tell you. Because we cannot question her. She is a goddess. They say my father was hunting in a grove sacred to the divinity. He startled a deer, a dappled horned stag. When he had killed the animal, she heard him boasting, and in her anger, Artemis detained our ships. A sacrifice had to be made. His daughter for the beast. That is how she went to her death. There was no other way for the army to get home or get to Troy. That is why he sacrificed her. It was ag against his will. And with great suffering, it was not done for the sake of Menelaus. But say you're right. Say he did it to help him. Was that a reason for him to die at your hands? Whose law is that? You watch when you lay down the law. You may be laying down your own pain and punishment. If you were to get what you deserve, if we are to take a life for a life, you should die first. The excuse you make for yourself is not an excuse. Tell me. Why are you bedding the man who killed my father? He's guilty. You give him children. You cast aside your older children. We feared the gods because our father feared the gods, so I do not excuse your adultery. What do you say that to is for your dead daughter? If you do, then you are beyond shame. You, 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 you sleep with a dire enemy for your daughter's sake. Ugh, I'm wasting my breath talking to you. You say all I do is abuse my mother. Mother! No! You torture me! You torture us all. I lead an, an unhappy life. I live with the constant cruelty you and your mate pour on me. Another child wears himself away in exile. Orestes, he barely escaped your bloodstained hands. You, you've often accused me of, of saving him to make you suffer. Well, know this, if I'd had the power, I would have done so. You tell that to the world. And if you, if you think me arrogant, wicked, shameless, good, it proves me worthy to be your breed. There's a fire in her head. It's burning her up. She doesn't care what she's saying. What should I care about her? She has so insulted her mother. Will she stop at nothing? Has she no shame? Yes! Yes, I do, I do feel shame. I know what I'm doing is wrong. It goes against my nature. But you are malign. You are cruel. You force me to act against my will. And if I shock you, you've taught me how to. You are a disgrace. All I say and do just gives you more ammunition. No, all you do and all you say is you're saying and doing. You find the words fit for what you do. I swear by Artemis, you will face Aegisthus when he's home. Please, offer your sacrifice. Don't let me stop you. I won't say another word. Raise up my offerings of the fruits of the earth. I pray to the Lord to lift my terrible fears. Apollo, my protector, listen to my heart's secret. I'm not among friends. I cannot speak openly while she stands near me. Her hatred and bitter words would spread lies through the city. Listen to me. Hear my secret. Great Apollo, two visions came in dreams last night. If they bode well, fulfill them. But if they are bad omens, turn them against my enemies. If some plan to rob me of the wealth I possess, prevent them. Let me live a life unharmed. 
Let me rule the house of Atreus and this kingdom. Let me live among friends. Let my days be prosperous and let the children who wish me no pain prosper too. God. Apollo. Hear me kindly. Give to me in mind what we pray for. There is more that I want, but I, I cannot say. You are a god and know well what it is. The children of Zeus see everything. Women of Mycenae, is this the house of Aegisthus? It is, stranger. You've guessed right. Am I right to guess this lady is his wife? She has the look of a queen. This is the very lady. Great lady, I bring good news from a friend to you and Aegisthus. I welcome you, but want to know who sent you. Thanateus. <gasps> and it concerns an important matter. You come from a friend, and your words will be friendly. What is this important matter? Orestes is dead. <gasps> what did you say? Pay no heed to her. What are you saying, stranger? I said Orestes is dead. I... <laughs> Orestes is dead. And I am no more. Be quiet. Are you telling the truth, stranger? How did he die? That is what I've come to tell you. He came with the pride of Greece to the Delphic Games. When the first race was proclaimed, he entered, a magnificent man admired by all eyes. He ran as well as he looked. He won the great prize. No other man enjoyed such triumphs. He won victory in each and every contest. Great cheers went to heaven. Orestes, the Greek, has won. <laughs> The son of Agamemnon, the leader against Troy. That's how things went. But if the gods are up to badness, even the mightiest man will fall. The next day, at sunrise, the chariots would race. He entered the lists with many others. The first was an Achaean, the second a Spartan. Two came from Libya, skilled charioteers. Orestes came next, his mares from Thessaly. The sixth, with chestnut colts, hailed from Aetolia. The seventh was Magnesian, and the eighth, an Aeneian, had white horses. The ninth came from Athens, built by the gods. And the last was Boeotian, filling the tenth chariot. The umpires drew lots and signed each his place. The brazen trumpets sound and the chariots start. The reins are tight, the steeds are ready, they shout, and the whole course is the clash of rattling chariots. The dust is rising, they nearly collide, for each man goaded on the creatures before him. Each wished to pass the wheels and the other's panting steeds. The horse's breath has turned to foam. They drench the driver's backs and wheels. Orestes kept his horses near the pillar. He grazed the post, he checked his pursuer, and so it continues. They are all unscathed, but... Beware the milk-white, hard-mouthed Aeneian steeds. They bolt between the sixth and seventh round and dash their brains against the Boeotian chariot. One driver crashes into another's path and the wreckage covers the whole plain of Crisa. The driver from Athens, he knows his stuff. He slackens stops. He draws aside the surge of chariots in complete confusion. Orestes stays in the rear. He's trusting in the finish. He sees the Athenian alone is left. He gives a roar to the racing horses. They rush on, they bring their chariots together. They're level, first one, then the other is in front. Orestes kept his nerve, the horses kept on course. And then, as the horses turned, his left hand relaxed. Before he knew it, he stuck the pillar's edge. The axle box breaks, he slides over the rail, he falls to the ground, the horse is mad in the middle of the course. And a cry of pity rises for the young man, so brave and so bloody his end. Flung to the earth, his feet soaring to the sky. The drivers, with great difficulty, stopped their horses. They free his corpse. 
No friend would know him. Disfigured, dirty with blood. They buried him on a funeral pyre, the Fuitians. This magnificent man, now miserable dust, they poured into an urn to carry to his home. That is the terrible story I have to tell you. For those who saw it with their own eyes, there was never a sadder sight. Our ancient house is over. <gasps> Destroyed, root and branch. Oh, God, what is this? Is it fortunate or terrible? Do I gain from this? It troubles me that I keep my life through my great loss. Lady, why are you downhearted at my news? Giving birth is strange. You do not hate your children, no matter how they treat you. Then my coming here was in vain. <laughs> no, not in vain. Do not say in vain. Do you have proof that he is dead? The son I gave birth to. I nurtured him at my breast. But in exile, he turned against me. He left this land and never saw me. He blamed me for his father's murder. He swore revenge against me. Sweet sleep never closed my eyes, day nor night since. I live like a woman condemned to die. But this day, I have been freed from fear. The fear of him and of that woman there. She was the worst torture. She lived in my house, draining my life's blood. And now I shall pass my days in peace for all her threats. Orestes, I can lament your fate. Your mother mocks it. Am I not well off? <laughs> But he is where he is. Nemesis, goddess of revenge, hear what she said of her son. Nemesis has heard what she needed to hear. She has made up her own mind. Fuck me. You are the winner in this. Oh, then will you and Orestes put a stop to this? It is we who have been stopped, not us stopping you. Oh, stranger. If you had silenced that roaring mouth you would have been well rewarded if all is well then may i leave no no you deserve a better welcome come in leave her to lament she and her friends have plenty to cry over Do you think that creature weeps for her son in pain and grief? No, she was gloating. Orestes. Orestes. By your death, I die as well. I lost my last hope. You would come and revenged my father and myself and now where can i go i've lost you and my father now i must serve those i hate most they murdered my father do you, do you call that justice no i'll never darken their door again I'll walk out that gate and die alone. If, if they loathe me, let them kill me. To, to die would be pleasure, to survive would be pain. I have no wish to live. Zeus, where are your bolts of thunder? Where is the fire of the sun? Can they look now and not see this? <laughs> Electra, do not cry, do not weep so loudly. You're tearing my heart in two. How do we do that? Don't breathe a word of hope that he who is dead is alive. You do that. 
and you dance on my breaking heart. A woman's golden necklace brought down King Amphiorus, and now beneath the... <laughs> this pain. He lives warm and well. It's great pain. Great pain came to her. His killer! Yes. yes. I know. I know. But Amphiorus had his champion. I had one too, <laughs> snatched from me. Your heart is sore. So is your fate. Mm. I know that too well. My life is a river and it floods with grief and it never stops this flood. We have watched your tears fall. Then let them still fall. Give me no hope, nor comfort. My brother's dead. All men die. No, to die as he did. A poor young man is tangled in the reins beneath the horse's brutal hoof. Do not think of the horror. To die among strangers. I could not touch him. <laughs> he was put in the earth. We gave him no funeral. We shed no tears over him. I raced here to give you great news. It will bring an end to all your suffering. <laughs> an end to all my suffering. <laughs> there is neither relief nor remedy. Orestes is here. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Orestes is here, just as I Sister, am here. Are you mad? Are you mocking me and yourself? I swear by our father, I am not mocking. I'm telling you, we have him here. No, it is not so. Who has, has told you these stories that you believe so easily? I believe it because I saw the signs with my own eyes. I didn't hear it from another soul. What have you seen that proves it? What evidence have you? What madness is in your mind? Listen, and learn from me. Then say if I am mad. Speak on, if it will please you. Then I'll tell you all I saw. I approached my father's grave. There were streams of milk flowing. And round the urn, a garland of every kind of flower. I was astounded. I looked about me. Was someone watching? Nothing stirred. No one. So I crept nearer the tomb. And there, at the grave's edge, a fresh-cut lock of hair, and my soul knew it saw Orestes. Orestes. An omen, a sign from the one I love most in this world. I took it in my hands. I couldn't speak. My eyes were crying, tears of joy. I knew it then. I knew for certain this precious offering was his. Who else but you or me could put it there? I swear to you, it was not my doing, nor yours. How could it be? You cannot leave the house even to worship. Was it our mother then? That's not her way, and she could not have done it without us noticing. It is Orestes. These offerings at the tomb came from him. Dear sister, have courage. We are not always victims of the same fate. We have had our share of bad fortune. Maybe today. It's turning to good. Good girl, I pity your innocent wit. Is my news not good news? You are living in the land of dreams and you don't know it. How can I not know what I saw with my two eyes? He is dead, my poor girl. Don't look to a dead man for salvation. That chance is gone. No, who told you this? A man who saw him meet his fate. What man? Where? I cannot fathom this. He is inside with our mother. Her welcome was not cold. No, no. Who left the wreaths? Who poured milk onto the grave? Someone kind has left offerings to our dead Orestes. And I was the poor fool rushing here with good news. 
I did not know our pitiful plight. Now I find new sorrows added to our old. That is how things stand. Now, listen to me. You will lighten the load of the burden we carry. How can I make the dead rise? That is not what I said. I'm not insane. Then what can I do? What are you asking? You must bring yourself to do what I advise. If I can do it, I will. Remember, to succeed, you must put your shoulder to the work. I know that. I'll use all my strength. Then listen to what I am determined to do. You know, as well as I do, we have no friends here. Death has robbed us blind. We two are alone. While my brother lived and prospered, I had hopes he would appear and avenge his father. Now that he's dead, I'm turning to you. You are my sister, and I need a sister's help. We must murder. No, 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 no. Don't back away. We must murder our father's murderer. Kill Agisthus. Now, I've spelled it out for you. Why hesitate? What hope have you to look forward to? You have been cheated out of your inheritance. Will you watch your life withering away? Will, will you live unloved with no wedding bed? Don't dream married bliss is in store for you. Aegisthus is not that stupid a man. He wouldn't risk his destruction from your child, nor mine. Take my advice. You'll profit handsomely. Your name to our dead father and our brother too, your name will be holy to them. You will show yourself to be a free-born woman. You'll, you'll, you'll marry well. An honest woman delights all men. Consent. Do you not see the honor together we will win? What friend or stranger will not greet us with praise? They'll cry, look at the two sisters. They saved their father's house. They looked their enemy in the eye. They avenged murder. Love them. Revere them at every feast. Honor their bravery. Our name will be celebrated far and wide. Our glory will live on after death. <laughs> Sweet sister, work with your father. Side with your brother, save me from my sorrows, and save yourself. Remember this. Shame is truly shame to a noble soul. In matters like these, it is wise to be cautious. Both of you be cautious. If she had a shadow of sense in her before she opened her mouth, she would have exercised caution. But, good women, she doesn't. Just who do you imagine that you are full of fighting talk and I'm to follow you? You are a woman, not a man. Do you know that? You are no match against those against you. They have the good fortune, we the bad. They are on the rise, we are sinking. Who would battle with such a mighty man? If you do, you'll be eaten without salt. If anyone's heard your words, we are in deeper trouble. What good is glory if we die in disgrace? Dying is easy, but being locked up, longing for death, but being denied it, that is beyond shame. I beg you, before we wreck ourselves entirely, restrain your anger. All you've said to me will be breath wasted. You are powerless. They have power. Learn to give in. Listen to her, Electra. Think of the future. Go easy. You must. Just as I imagined, before you opened your mouth, I knew you'd turn back. 
I'll stand alone and I myself will do it. And though I'm on my own, it will be done because it must be. This is good for you. It is a pity you weren't so determined when father died. What would you have done then? My spirit was the same. My head was not ready. Try to keep that head on your shoulders still. I take it you refuse to help me. I do, because you will fail. Oh, you're wise. Well done. You're a coward, damn you. You condemn me now, you'll praise me later. I'll listen to them one and the same. <laughs> you will never listen to praise from me. Time will tell. We'll see. Oh, get from my sight. You are useless to me. Useless? I am not. But you won't listen or learn. Run to your mother. Tell her all about it. I do not hate you that much. No, but you do not respect me, I know. Not respect you. I want to help you. So you decide what's right and wrong? When you return to reason, I'll follow you. Very wise you are. And very wrong. My words to you exactly. Do you not think what I say is right? Sometimes being right is wrong. I will not live with such a lie. If you do this, you'll see that I was right. I will do it. And I won't be swayed by you. Is that really so? Will you not think again? No. Nothing is worse than wrong advice. You're deaf to every word uh, I argue. I decided that long ago. Then I'll leave you to it. My words won't turn you from your ways. Run along inside. Even if you begged me, I'd not listen to you. It's insane to ask for what's impossible to get. If you think you're wise, so be it. Your heart will soon be sore you didn't hear my words. Consider the birds of the air. In their fragile nest, they sustained those who gave them life and pleasure. So should we pay to those of our name that debt, that bond of nature. As God is just, guardian of all laws, no mortal escapes punishment. The day of judgment dawns. O oh, voice that's truly heaven sent, tell this to the dead below. Tell Agamemnon this great sorrow. His house is standing desolate. The ties of blood are torn. Where once was love, there now is hatred. Alone, Electra mourns. She weeps for her poor father, like a bird who's lost its child. She looks upon his killers, and her heart is driven wild. Where shall you find on this earth a woman to match her worth? The wisest, best of daughters. Electra mourns alone. She waits for her glory till stone turns to water. May I see you in that glory. May I see your blood restored. Your fate will change. It will come good. You feared God's law. And you feared God. Tell me, women, am I on the right road to my destination? What are you looking for? Why are you here? I've been looking a long time for the home of Aegisthus. You've come the right way. It's here. Could you tell them I've arrived? They've long been waiting for me. This woman should do that. She is related to them. Lady, tell them a Phocian is looking for Aegisthus. Don't tell me you've come with proof positive of the story we've heard. What story? I was told to bring news of Orestes. What news? I'm shaking with fear. He's dead. And this small urn it contains all that's left of him. I see it with my own unhappy eyes. I see the burden you carry in my burden. Are you weeping for Orestes? This is his dust. If those are his own, give me that to hold. I'll weep for that dust for myself. I'll weep for my whole family. Give this to her. She means no harm to it. She's a friend to him or one of his family. Orestes. The man I loved most. <laughs> this is all that's left of you. <laughs> I sent you away from here full of hope, but your return 
has emptied all hope from me. No. No. You are nothing. And I hold you in my hands. But the day you left, you were the light of day. I wish I'd died before I saved you from death. I sent you into a foreign land. You, you could have fallen here beside your father. You could lie with him in his grave, but but you died in exile, far from home, from your sister. Mm. It was a sad death. I was not there. I could not wash your lovely corpse with my hands. I could not snatch your lovely bones from the pyre. Strangers' hands buried you. And you come back to me as dust. A handful of dust. I nursed you as a baby. I didn't mind the bother. That you weren't your mother's child. You were mine. No one else in that house cared for you but me. <laughs> you called me sister. Sister, you called me. All vanished in a day with your death. The wind's come and blown everything away. Your father's dead, I'm dead. You're lost. Those that stand against us laugh. Your mother, who is and is no mother, is mad with joy. Her crimes, I know you could have put a stop to them. But fate is cruel. Your fate and my fate does not bring me your beautiful face. No. It delivers cold ash and useless shadow. <laughs> oh, pain. 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 You have destroyed me, my loved, loved brother. Yes, you have destroyed me. Now I am nothing. Take me with you, let me be nothing with you. Let me lie with you in the grave. For the dead do not mourn, no. They do not mourn. <laughs> Electra, you are mortal. Your father and Orestes too, mortal. Death comes to us all. We have to face it. What can I say? I cannot speak, but I can no longer hold my tongue. What are you saying? What's the matter with you? Am I looking at the great woman, Electra? <clears throat> That's me. I'm a sorry sight. Yours is a pitiful story, so pitiful. Sir, your pity's not for me, surely. Your beauty has been broken and wickedly disfigured. Yes, sir. I am the woman your words describe. They stopped you from marrying? <laughs> They've sentenced you to misery. Stranger, why do you look at me and lament? I, I have known so little of my own sorrow. 
What have I said to tell you that? Because you are marked by many sorrows. You see only half of them. What worse pain could there be than this? To live with murderers. Who's murderers? What evil are you whispering about? My father's. And I'm their slave. Who demands this? My mother, who's mother only in name. What does she do? Is she violent? Does, does she deprive She's you? She's violent. She deprives me. Is there no one to help you prevent it? There was one. You've shown me his ashes. For a long time, I thought of you with pity. You are the first <laughs> to ever pity me. I am the first to know that your pain is my pain. Who are you? Some relative from far away. If these women are on our side, I can tell you. Well, they're with us. You can trust them. Give me back that urn and I'll tell you everything. Please, stranger, don't, don't well, ask me to do, do that. Do as I say, you won't no, regret it. No, don't take from me what I love most no, in I life. I won't let you keep it. <laughs> Oh, my love, Terestes, I cannot even bury you. Be quiet, you have no reason to weep. No reason to weep, my brother's dead. No, you have no right to call him you that. You refuse to let me respect the dead. You are refused nothing, but this doesn't belong it to does. you. It does, if that is my brother's body. It's not him, it's not Orestes. Then where is his grave? There is none. We don't bury the living. Son, what, what are you saying? All I say is true. <sighs> is the man alive? It's alive as I am. Orestes. Is it you? Look, look. It's my father's signet ring. <gasps> <laughs> Am I telling the truth? <laughs> Do I hear your voice again? It's my voice. It's none other. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Do I hold you in my arms? You hold me there forever. <laughs> dear women, dear friends, look. It's Orestes. We thought he was dead. No, no, he's alive. We see him. And we're crying for your good fortune. Oh, my darling, darling son, you've come home, you're here, you've arrived. You've seen those you love. <laughs> I'm here, I'm here, but shh, wait. What's wrong? It's best to keep quiet in case anyone in there oh, should hear. I swear by Artemis, I fear no one in that house. Those women are, uh, are good for nothing. They are a waste of space on this earth. Women can fight as well. You know that from experience. Oh, oh you have brought back the old sorrow. <laughs> Never hide it, nothing can heal it. Never forget it. I know that as well. But the hour is coming and we will remember what they did. I can tell what they did until the end of time. My lips have been long sealed and now they are free. True, but mind how freely you speak. Why? Don't say too much until the time is right. Who could be silent? Who could say nothing? I've seen you. I, 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 I never thought. I gave up hope. You see me here because the gods have told me to come now. If the gods have brought you here, then this is their greatest gift. And in your being here... I see the hand of heaven. <laughs> I don't want to limit your happiness, but it's too great. You're frightening me. Oh, I welcome you back with open arms. You're here. You, you've seen how I was suffering. Do not... Do not... Do not do what? Do not... <sighs> Take the light of day from me. I find it in your face. <sighs> then find it there and in no other. Do you allow me? I do. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Dear women, I've heard a voice. I've lost all hope of hearing. How could I be silent and not, uh, not give one cry of joy? Oh! Oh, I have you now. <laughs> I see your face. I'll see it forever. I'll never forget it. Say no more now. <laughs>
I know how vile our mother is. I know Augustus wastes our father's wealth. This is not the time for these stories. Tell me instead what we should do. Do we reveal ourselves or do we lie in wait? Hmm? How do we wipe the smile off our enemies' faces? When we go inside, wipe the smile off your face. Weep as if the tragic story were true. When the battle is won, we'll have time to laugh. Brother, I will do everything to please you. I wouldn't harm you even if it were to help myself. But the gods are on our side. I'll serve them. You know how things stand here. Mm. Aegisthus is not at home. Our mother is in the house. Oh, don't worry, she won't see a smile on my face. My hatred of her is too deep. Since you've come home, I have been weeping, weeping for joy. <laughs> on the one day I've seen you dead and alive. How could I not weep? It's a miracle. If my father came back from the dead, I'd believe it. Fate has guided you, so I'll do as you bid. If I'd been left alone, I'd have done one or two things. Live or die like a brave woman. Be quiet. I guess I'm coming from the house. Are you two complete fools? Are you tired of living? Have you not enough sense to see the danger you're steeped in? I've been watching you, and it's just as well. Those inside would have guessed what plot you're hatching. As it is, I've taken care to prevent them doing so. You've had your fill of welcomes and words of joy. Get inside now. Any more delay does us no good. I'll make an end of this. When I go inside, how shall I find things? Everything's well. There's no chance they'll know you. You've told them I'm dead. Here, you're dead and in the grave. Are they pleased at that? What do they say? I'll tell you all when you settle this business. Get inside. All is as well or as wicked as you'd expect. Tell me, who is this brother? Do you not see? I've never set eyes on him. <laughs> Do you not know the man into whose hands you once put me? What man? What are you saying? It's the man you trusted to carry well, me to Phocis. This is the one good man who stayed loyal to my murdered father. That's the man. Now let that be enough. Ask no oh, more questions. Oh, no, this is a great day. The one good man in Agamemnon's house. Well, how did you come here? Are, are, you the, are you the man who saved us both from so many troubles? Oh, I, I, I bless your hands. <sighs> I bless your feet. How, how could you be here so long without me knowing you? Your news killed me, but the truth has, has brought me back to life. I... I greet you as a father, for I think you are a father. In one day, I have hated and loved you like no other man. That's enough for now. There will be plenty of time to tell all, Electra. But don't stand here. It's time to act. Clytemnestra is alone. There is no man inside. If you hold back now, you'll face an army. No more time for words. Time to get inside. First, we'll pray to the gods that guard my father's house. <laughs> So, I've stood before you often. I've made offerings with what little I possess. Now I ask you, Lord Apollo, with all I have, I fall before you. I implore you, protect our work. Show the godless how the gods reward evil. God of war advances, breathing blood and vengeance. The hounds are on the trail, the sinners wait within. My mind can see it all. There's no escaping death. The champion of the dead, he's entered the house. Ancestral Hall of Kings. His sword is smelling blood. Say nothing, women. But the men have almost finished their work. What are they doing? They stand beside her as she prepares the urn for burial. Why have you rushed out? To watch in case against the surprises us. Do you hear? Someone inside is crying out. I've heard that dreadful cry. It frightens me. L listen, another cry. Where are you? you had none for him or the man who fathered him. My unhappy city, this unhappy house, a curse was placed upon you. Now it's being lifted. If you can strike her again, hit her harder, strike her! God help me! God help me! Oh. I wish Aegisthus were with you. The curse has worked. The dead live again, draining the blood of the living.
Look, their hands are stained, and I do not condemn them. How have you fared, Orestes? I've done well if Apollo spoke the truth. Is that foul woman dead? But your mother will no longer displease you. Stop! I see Aegisthus coming back into the house. Why do you see him? He's coming towards us. Oh, he's smiling. He's ours. Hurry into the palace. You've done half your work well. Now finish it perfectly. We will, don't worry. Get to where you're going. I'm on my way. Leave matters here to me. Speak gently to him. Let him walk blindly into the trap of justice. Can any tell me where the Phocian strangers are? I've heard they say Orestes died falling from a chariot. <sighs> you. I'm asking you. You had enough to say before. You have most to lose by this, so you should know. Of course I know. I should know what happened to those I love most. Where are they? Tell me immediately. Inside. They have warmed the heart of their hostess. Do they truly say he was dead? They did. They even showed us the dead man. May I see the body too, to make sure? You may, but it's an ugly sight. For once, your words please me. Stay pleased, <laughs> if you've reason to be. Throw open the door. Let all Mycenae and Argos see. If you had hopes in this man, he is dead. Now accept my rule or face the dire consequences. I've learnt my lesson. Time has taught me to side with the strong. laid low by the angry gods. If that anger was justified, let me not say so. Remove the covering from that face. I must mourn for my relation. Remove it yourself. You must look at this and speak kind words. Well said. I will. Call Clytemnestra if she's in the house. She's beside you. Look. Why are you frightened? Don't you recognize the face? Who has set the trap I have fallen into? Do you know that you've been talking to the dead? Orestes. I understand. It's you. You're so deep. And yet so long deceived. You will kill me. Let me say one thing. Let him say nothing, brother. Not one word. He is doomed. Let him die now. Kill him. Give his body what burial is due to it. Get him out of our sight. Then and only then will I be rid of the wrongs he has done. Get inside. Words won't save you now. I want your life. Why do you force me into the house? If what you're doing is right, why do it in darkness? Why not kill me here? Give me no orders. Get inside. Is this house forever cursed? Shall there be killing after killing forever? This shall be yours. That much I can see clearly. Then you see more than your father ever did. You words are wasting my time. Get inside. You lead the way. You go first. In case I run away? No. In case you choose where to die. 
I want you to taste the bitterness of death. Your sentence is swift and severe. Children of Atreus, your suffering has ended. You have won freedom. The deed is done. In Electra by Sophocles, Electra was played by Kristen Scott Thomas. Chrysothemis was Liz White, Clytemnestra, Diana Quick, and Aegisthus, Tyrone Huggins. The Servant was played by Peter White, and Orestes by Jack Loudon. The Chorus was played by Julia Dearden, Golda Rochevel, and Talisa Teixeira. The Music was composed by PJ Harvey. Electra, in a version by Frank McGuinness, was originally performed at the Old Vic Theatre in London in autumn last year. It was directed by Ian Rickson and co-produced by the Old Vic and Sonia Friedman Productions. The radio adaptation was directed by Ian Rickson and produced by Nadia Molinari.